We are going to solve exponential equations today. And so there are different methods, as you will see. For instance, here, the easiest and quickest way to do this is like this. Right, you've got two raised to the seven X minus seven power equals 16. Well, it just so happens that 16 <clears throat> equals two to the fourth power. Two times two times two times two is 16. So if we write it like this, two to the seven X minus seven equals two to the four, then very clearly, since two is two, the exponents have to equal each other. So, um, we can say 7x minus 7 equals 4. Since they have the same base, right? It, since 2 is 2, then the exponent on this 2 has got to equal the exponent on this 2. So all we're going to have to do now is add 7 to both sides. And so we'll have 7x equals 11. 7x equals 11. Bring it up here. And then divide by 7 and divide by 7 so that x equals 11 over 7. And you can do that kind of thing when this number over here can be converted to a power of this base right here. Most of the time you don't have that kind of luck. Stop me if you have any questions, okay? For sure. Okay. Now we can do the same thing here, the same exact method. Because four equals two to the second power. So we can just very easily kind of cheat. Not that I would recommend cheating on a regular basis, but we can actually do it here. Because it's so easy. 2 to the 3x minus 5 equals 4, which is 2 to the 2. So again, if you've got the same base, it has to be true that the power on one of the 2s has to equal the power on the other 2, or they're not equal. And now all I have to do is solve for X. So what is this? Negative five plus five is zero, so I'll have three X equals two plus five is seven, and then divide both sides by three, so X is seven thirds. Now, like I said, that was really super easy. And if that was all there was to it, then this would not be college algebra. And we know college algebra is not easy. So we are going to begin doing some um, more elaborate things. 
But anyway, that's one thing you can do when you're lucky enough to to be able to change this to that base, which we were since 16 is a power of two and four is a power of two. On the other hand, most problems are like that. Six cannot be changed into a power of two. So we're going to have to do this the most typical way. Here we go. I have to get X, see how X is up in the air? That's what I consider exponents to be. X is up in the air. We can't solve for it because it's not down on ground level. It's up there. We have to bring it down. The only thing that brings down an exponent is a logarithm. So I don't have any choice here. I'm going to have to take the log of both sides of this equation. So I'll take the log of two to the X equals the log of six. Now the reason I did that was that this X exponent it's an X and it's an exponent. Um, this is in the argument of the log function. And so the power rule says that we bring this down in front. So I'm going to do that. I'll have X times log of two. equals log of six. Now log of two is just a number, right? Right. So I can divide both sides by the log of two. Over here, the log of two cancels out and we're left with X equals the log of six divided by the log of two. And this is called the exact answer, but that's not what they want. What they want is a rounded answer and rounded to four decimal places and you can see what the number is there. So, we're gonna grab a calculator and make that happen. Okay, so log six, here's the log button right there, log six, close the paren, divided by log two, close the paren. And there you go. Now all I have to do is round this to four decimal places. All right, so let me take this because I want to mark it up. And I'm going to put that over here. And definitely make it smaller. There. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is so that I could number the decimal places. 
This is decimal place one, two, three, and four. So if this number was a one, two, three, or four, I would just knock it off and my answer would be 2.5849, but it's not, it's a six. Six is big enough to round the nine up to a 10. So the process goes like this. If you have 2.5849, six, then the six makes the nine go up to a 10. I write down the zero and carry the one, and then I add one plus four is five. And then I bring down the eight, I bring down the five, I bring down the decimal point, I bring down the two, and that's my answer. So a little review of rounding there too. Woohoo! Okay, just let me know. Just let me know if you have anything you want to ask about. Yes, Miss Barbara. Okay, okay, good. Now here we have two to the X equals three. Uh, there's no way that we can turn a three into a base of two. So, this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do the same exact thing. Two to the X equals three. And I'm going to take the log, the LOG, of both sides, like that. And the whole reason for doing that is the power rule that lets me bring this X down in front. No other reason for doing it. So I will have X times the log of two equals the log of three And I divide both sides by log of two. Log of two. Over here on the left, log two cancels out, so I'm left with x equals, and again, if they had wanted the exact answer, that would be my answer log three over log two. That's called the exact answer. But no such luck. We're gonna have to put it in the calculator. Log three over log two. So log three, close, uh, hello? Log three, close parentheses, divided by log two, close parentheses, enter. And it's gonna happen again. This must be our lucky day. Okay, again, look, it's almost exactly the same number. Ooh. Round of four decimal places. So this six is going to make the nine go up to a 10, and I carry the one over to the four, 
one plus four is five, and then bring down the rest of the number 1.58, so that I have 1.5850. Wow. That's weird, it's almost the same. I know. Is that cool? Let's look at it. Ah, this this was log six over log two. And this is log three over log two. Interesting. OK, now we're going to get more complicated. Ooh. So, ooh, ooh. so it's not going to stay boring. All right, here we have. And what are the, again, they want that. See, I like exact answers. This is our problem. 15 to the X power equals five to the X plus two power. Now really this X plus two should have parentheses around it because it's one thing. It's one thing, one exponent that has two terms. So it's treated as one thing. Okay, now I need to bring the X down to ground level so I can solve for it, so I can say X equals. That means I have to use a logarithm because the only thing that brings down a logarithm, <laughs> the only thing that brings <laughs> down an X from the exponent position is a logarithm. Okay, so we're gonna do it. I'm going to take the log of 15 to the X equals the log of five to the X plus two. Okay. Now I am going to put parentheses around this when I bring it down. What logarithms let us do, and I'm going to say it over and over again. What logarithms let us do is bring down the exponent, and since I have an X in the exponent, in both of these exponents, they need to come down so I can solve for them. So now, this X can come down in front, and this X plus two can come down in front over here. So I will have X times log 15 equals parentheses X plus two times the log of five. And that's where I'm at right now. Do I need to make this bigger? Can you see it okay? I can see it okay, Miss Barbara. Here. It disappeared. Is this better or not? Yeah. Well, put that guy over there. <laughs> okay, so now I have X times the log of 15. Log 15 is just a number. If you can put that in your calculator right now, and get a number. We're not going to do that, 
but I'm just letting you know. Now I log five is a number, it's just a number. I'm going to distribute it in there and there so that I have X times the log of five plus two times the log of five. Okay, I distributed log 5 over to the x and over to the 2. Okay, now let me do something that's not related right now. Just as an example, suppose I had, I don't know, suppose you were back in Um, I don't know, beginning algebra, and you had this little equation to solve. 5x equals 3x plus 2. You would subtract the 3x over to the 5x, right? I mean, that would just be the normal thing to do to get your x terms together on one side of the equal sign. And then 5x minus 3x would be 2x. And then the 3x is 0 out, and you'd be left with a 2. And then you would divide both sides by 2. So you would get x equals 1. We're going to do the same thing. Only it's a little uglier. This is x times a number equals x times a number plus a number. So I'm going to subtract x times log 5 from both sides of the equation. x log 5. Now, x log 5 minus x log 5 is 0. And I bring down 2 times log 5. And I'm going to bring these down. We've got x times the log of 15. minus x times the log of 5. Why did I do that? I didn't have to do that. <sighs> All right. Um, the reason I don't is I could just put a little thing like that. It says multiply, right? Okay, now look at this. There's an X in both of these terms. I can factor it out. It's a common factor. So I will have X times log of 15 minus log of 5. Equals 2 times log 5. Now, um, this is a number. If you were to put that in your calculator, you'd say log 15 minus log 5, enter, you would get just a number. So this is really just X times a number. So I can divide both sides by log 15 minus log five.
over. I'm going to have to write little, <clears throat> little there. Log 15 minus log 5. which of course will cancel out over here, leaving me with All right, now if they were looking for an exact answer, you could just leave it that way, but they're not. What the people who wrote the book are looking for is a calculator answer. And having done this for a long time, I know that doing this is gonna cause you to get the wrong answer just because it's almost impossible to put all that gobbledygook into the calculator in the right way for the calculator to understand. So we have to make this easy for the calculator to understand. Here's my goal. I want to change all this, which is really ugly. I want to change all that into something that looks a lot cleaner and is able to go into the calculator a lot cleaner so that I have log something over log something. Your calculator will understand that very, very easily. So let's do that. First, let's start here. That two can go up here. I know we brought it down, but now it's convenient to bring it back up. So that I have X equals the log of five squared over now here we have the quotient rule. These logs have the same base. You can't see it, but it's 10. They have the same exact base. So I can combine these using the quotient rule. Log. Fifteen. Over. Five. Now what's 15 over five? Three. What's five squared? 25. What this is going to equal is the log of 25 over the log of three. Now we will not make a mistake with that. I mean, it's like I said, it's almost impossible to, to enter this into the calculator the, the exact right way so that your calculator knows what you mean. But there's no mistaking this. All I have to do is do this, x equals log 25 divided by log 3. And I'll get an answer, and I better look at what it, we need to round to. Again, oh, do not round until the final answer. See, they don't want us to round before that. Then round to four decimal places. OK, so again, we're going to be rounding to four decimal places. So let me get my calculator. 
we're going to take the log of 25, close parentheses, divided by the log of 3, close parentheses, enter. And I'm going to take this. They have to be giving us really ugly ones, don't they? Yeah. yeah. It's not fair. I protest. OK, I'm going to put it right here. Try to. No, didn't work. Well, maybe it did. Uh. OK. Okay, here's our number. And now we are going to have to round it to one, two, three, four decimal places. Okay, now that's a four. It's not going to round up the nine. So I could just get rid of that and that's going to be our answer 2.92. Nine, nine, I hope. Ah, yeah. This is called simplifying your logarithm or logarithms because it's much easier on the calculator if you go ahead and do that. But it's also much easier if you just give the exact answer and you don't have to worry about it. We have one just like it. I think it's going to be just like it. Somebody is so hung up on four decimal places. This <laughs> and this. OK. So. 6 to the X equals 2 to the X plus 1. So I'm going to take the log of both sides in order to bring down the X. And you're going to see me going to the same exact steps. Bring down the exponents. Okay, so I'm going to move this over a little bit. And I'm going to distribute log 2 to the x and to the plus 1. So we'll have x times log 2 plus 1 times log two, which of course is just log two. Then to get my X terms on the same side, I subtract X times log two 
from both sides. So x on the right side, x log 2 minus x log 2 is 0. So I'm left with 1 times log 2, which is log 2. So I'll have x times log 6. minus x times log 2. And then, because x is in both of these terms, I'll factor it out. I'll say log 6 minus log 2. So we have x parentheses log 6 minus log 2 parentheses closed equals just log 2. So right now we know what's coming. We know we have to put it in the calculator. So we might as well just go ahead and use the quotient rule over here and not wait. So this will be x times log 6 over 2 equals log 2. And since 6 divided by 2 is 3, what we'll have on the left side is x times log 3 equals log 2 so I'll divide both sides by log 3 which is just a number the log 3's cancel out on the left side leaving me with x equals log 2 over log 3 And then I put that in my calculator. Log 2 divided by log 3. So I get this number, and I have to round it to four decimal places. Oops. Okay, okay, okay. I have a feeling I have invaded the space of another problem. Ooh, and it's ugly. So we have to go to other pieces of paper anyway. Okay, so here are our four decimal places right there. This two is not big enough to round up to a nine. So we're going to go with X equals 0 0.6309. which is, I think, the right answer. Yeah, 0 0.6309. OK, 
okay now. So these are the end of our normal exponential equations that we have to turn into logarithmic equations in order to solve them. And you can see that there are really only two hard ones. Well, they're all hard, but there are some that are harder than others. Okay, now these coming up are challenging. So what I'm going to do is this. Okay, and these are going to be rounded to two decimal places. Why? I haven't the slightest idea. Okay, solve the following exponential equation. Now, this is horrible. You have to go one step at a time. They don't make them big, do they? Okay, here we have e to the x plus e to the negative x equals 3. And the next one is just like it, but with, with different numbers. These are, are uh, this is the same as those, um, uh, the extra credit exponential yeah, yeah. equation yeah so you've already worked this and yeah, so it yeah. probably is not going to seem real hard to you do you want me to go over it or not sure sure okay well here's the way i do it That's because it, um, anything like three even to the negative X is one over three to the positive X. Now that we have a denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. Okay, the denominator e to the x right there. And over here on the left, I'm going to distribute that into the parentheses. So I'll have e to the x times e to the x plus e to the x times one over e to the x equals three e to the x. Now over here, 
e to the x times e to the x. Notice that both of these bases are the same, so I can add the exponents. That'll be e to the x plus x. And then this plus sign. I'm going to rewrite e to the x as e to the x over 1 and multiply it by 1 over e to the x. This is the whole reason I chose to <clears throat> multiply both sides of the equation by e to the x. Because over here, e to the x times 1 is e to the x and 1 times e to the x is e to the x. So what I'll end up with is e to the 2x plus e to the x over e to the x equals 3 e to the x. So I'll have e to the 2x plus 1. This is just 1 when the top and the bottom both cancel out and nothing is left, it's one. So this is gonna be a one, and that'll be three e to the x. Now I'm going to subtract three times e to the x from both sides of the equation. Oh not 3x, 3 times e to the x. All right, so there and there, so that I get e to the 2x minus 3e to the x plus 1 equals zero. And now, as you're feeling, or might be feeling, or somebody else watching might be feeling totally lost, like what do I do now? Notice that this exponent is two times this exponent. Bingo! When that happens, you can use U substitution. So I will let U equal e to the x. And that way, if I square both sides, I'll get U squared equals e to the x squared. And when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. So e to the 2 will equal, I mean u to the 2 will equal e to the 2x. So e to the 2x will be u squared. e to the 2x equals u squared. And e to the x equals u minus 3u plus 1 equals 0. Now, I was kind of hoping it would be factorable. It's not. So we're going to have to use the uh, quadratic formula. A is 1, B is negative 3, and C is positive 1. And here we'll have U equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. So that'll be u equals negative, negative 3 
plus or minus the square root. I don't want to do that. I want to lower this. U equals negative, negative three, plus or minus the square root of, parentheses negative three squared, minus four times one, times one. All over two times one. So, u will equal 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4 over 2, which will be 3, no, yeah, 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. So, I need to put that somewhere else. Oh, I have more room than I thought. Nonetheless, all right, we are going to have u equals 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2, and u equals 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. But, I'm going to do it over here. Ha, ha, ha. All right. I'm going to let u equal e to the x and u squared equals e to the 2x. Much better. Because I have to go back and look at what u equals. u equals e to the x. So e to the x equals 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2, and e to the x equals 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, now how on earth can we ever solve this? Easy. We can use the inverse function of e to the x, which is the natural logarithm. So e to the x. Yes, I'm going to take the ln of e to the x equals the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And I need to move this over a little bit. Okay, so, um, I have an exponent of x, so I can bring that down in front. I'll have x times the ln of e equals the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, something you want to memorize is that the ln of e equals 1. The ln of e equals 1. The ln of e equals 1. So what you have here is x times 1. 
equals the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5 minus the ln of 2 using the quotient rule. So I'll have x equals, I, and then I need to put that in my calculator. So we're going to take the ln of 3 minus the square root of 5, Now, to close your parentheses, you're going to have to hit your right arrow key first, and then hit the parenthesis, minus the ln of 2. I think that was it. Yes. And I'll hit Enter. So I have negative um, 0 0.962423650. And we're supposed to round to two decimal places. So negative 0.962, this two will not round the six up to a seven, so negative 0.96 is going to be my answer right here. Or 0 0.96. Okay, now. going to have e to the x equals 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And I will take the ln of both sides. So I'll have x times the ln of e equals the ln of 3 plus the root of 5 minus the ln of 2. And this is 1 equals 1. x times 1 is x. Notice I'm going, I'm skipping some steps because I put in all the steps over here. And now all I have to do is take this and put it in my calculator. Come on there. Now I actually want to take a picture of that. I think that'll help people reading this to see that. And then over here, I'll do it over here too. Um, okay, the ln of three plus the square root of five. Now, 
hit the right arrow key, then close the paren, minus the ln of two. And we have the positive version of this. Again, rounding to two decimal places, that two will not cause the six to round up to a seven, so our answer is going to be positive 0.96. No, no, no. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now let's see if we agree with them. Wrong one. That's the one. That gave you a hard one. Yeah. I mean, really? Really? Okay, and here you'd use exactly the same steps, except you've got a five. So there's one more that looks a little difficult. Actually, I think you'll find it not difficult at all. It's got an E. Problems that have E in them, you would think would be harder, and they're not, they're easier. Okay, so here's our problem here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the LN. Whenever you see E, you want to use the LN. E, the LN of E to the negative 0 0.41 T equals the LN of 0 0.87. Okay, now we're going, the whole reason for using logarithms is to bring down the exponent. So negative 0 0.41t times the ln of e equals the ln of 0 0.87. The ln of e is 1. One. Well, that's just not working out at all. So, I'll do it the right way. Negative 0 0.41 T times 1. Ha! The LN of 0 0.87. So negative 0 0.41 T equals the LN of 0 0.87. And so we solve for T by dividing both sides by negative 0 0.41 and negative 0 0.41. And then we just put that in the calculator. The ln of 0 0.87 divided by 
negative 0 point. I really don't need the zero part. Would have been enough to say negative 0.41. Enter. And that's what I get. Let's see what they say. Yeah, how about that? Round to four decimal places as needed. We need to. So. I could leave it gigantic, I guess. That's good now, I hope. So here's our four decimal places. Here are our four decimal places. The six should cause that six to round up to a seven. So point three three nine seven. Let me double check that. Whoa. Yes. Okay, that's it.